Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. Today we're going to be creating a pass menu for our game. Not really much to say about that, so let's just jump right into it. So as you can see, I'm here in Unity and what I want to begin with is kind of sketching out the UI. So let's find our overlay canvas and have a look at what we have in here. We currently have our shop, which sits at the bottom of our screen and the game over menu that we switch on and off as the game continues. And I thought we should go ahead and create our pause menu in kind of the same style as the game over menu uses. So what you could do is just duplicate the game over menu and modify it to suit our needs, or we could quickly recreate it. Let's do that because not everyone has watched the game over tutorial. So let's just go right click UI and create a new panel. And we basically just want to choose none for the source image so we can get rid of those uh, roundings in the edges. And this allows us to simply choose a color and we can go ahead and choose the same color as the background image for our game over menu. So let's actually just copy this entire image component and paste it over here. Cool. Then what we want is are some buttons and uh, we of course have some buttons inside of our game over menu. And I'm actually just gonna take one of these buttons, copy it over here, and just copy the main me uh, the menu button, and just have a look at some of the settings. So the image here, we have again, no source image. The color is completely white. Everything else is pretty much default values, and we don't want this on click event. And we can delete the canvas group. So this is pretty much just a standard button. And then if we look at the text, you can see that we've put in menu here. We have Roboto Medium as the font. The font size is at 40. And the color is kind of the same color as our background element. So you can just copy the hex here if you want to and all of the other settings. So um, now I've showed you uh, those, we can kind of continue here. So let's move this to the center of our screen, maybe a bit down. And let's kind of widen it to fill up a bit more. Something like that looks pretty nice. And let's go and write continue here instead. So if we press this button, of course, the uh, pause menu is going to disappear and we can continue with our game. Let's also rename the game object itself to continue. And everything else seems fine for now. So let's now drag this to be a child of the panel that we created. And let's rename our panel to pause menu. Then we can duplicate our continue button. And what I basically want to do is create two buttons that are side by side here. Uh, one for restarting and one for quitting. And you could just do that like I did here by moving and positioning them uh, individually. But what I would rather do is, uh, whoops, I went back a step too far there, is create an empty object. And we can kind of scale this to the size of our continue button and then move it down. And this is going to just be a simple horizontal layout group. So now we can take a few buttons, say our first continue button here and a second one, and you can see it scales it automatically for us. However, we need a bit of spacing. So let's just bump our spacing up to say eight pixels. And I think that looks pretty great. So we can call this one our two buttons. And then we can call the first button retry. And the second button we'll call this one menu. And of course we need, need to change the text elements as well. So this one's gonna say retry, not retray. And this one is going to say menu. Cool. Yeah, so pretty simple UI, but it does the job. Uh, so what we can do further here is maybe just add a bit of contest, uh, context text <laughs> up here, which is probably just gonna say paused. So let's just create one big text element. And again, we can just copy our game over text from the game over menu here. And let's have a look at some of the settings. We have a font size of 85. The font itself is Roboto Medium. I think we could easily change this to Roboto Bold. And everything else is like this. We have a bit of shadowing. We can delete the canvas group. And yeah, that's it. And then we can change the text here to um, Past. Cool. And what I want to do is kind of scale this in to be the same width of our buttons. Move it down until it kind of sits on top of them. And let's maybe, instead of having a fixed font size, let's make this a best fit. And that means that it will scale between these two sizes to fit uh, this size as best as uh, it possibly can. And uh, we can maybe widen this a tiny bit. And you can see that it actually goes above 100 here. So let's widen this to 130. 
And uh, now we can take this a bit back. There we go. Just to kind of make it the same width as our buttons. You could put a fixed font size in there, or you could have it scale automatically. Let's also rename this object to paused text. And now I think if we just move these elements up a bit, we are pretty much ready to make this an interactive menu. So the first thing that we want to do is of course disable the menu itself. This way we can enable it when we want to inside the game. Then we want to create a script and let's make this a script that sits on the game master because our game master is responsible for changing states in the game. It's responsible for uh, keeping track of important things as what wave we are on and what we should build. So let's also have this pause our game. And uh, basically we're just going to create a script here called called pause menu. Let's do that. So hit create an ad there and let's double click that to open it up in Visual Studio. And that's just going to take a second to load here and it's going to pop up on my secondary monitor, but I can quickly drag it over. There we go. Um, so what I want in here is basically a way for us to register if the user has pressed the escape key. I think the escape key is going to be the only button that is going to toggle. Actually, we could add the P in there as well. That's a very popular uh, key for well, pausing the game. So let's create a update method. And this can be used for checking for input. So let's go if input dot get key down. And then we want to check for the key code dot escape key. Or, and we use the two vertical bars here. Or in case we get the key down, key code dot, and then we use P for pause. Awesome. And in case this happens, what we want to do is we want to call some kind of method called toggle, where we will toggle the pause menu either on or off, depending on what it's already set to. So we'll just invert its current state. And we can delete the system.collections up here, and we can go ahead and create this toggle method. So at the moment, we actually already have a bit of functionality for um, kind of stopping our mouse movement. If you were, uh, remember when we implemented our camera controller here, we made it so that if we pressed escape, we could disable that. So right now I'm trying to move, but it won't. And then I hit escape again, and we can move around once more. So in order to kind of get rid of this code, um, we got to go into the uh, main camera under the camera controller and delete the variable called do movement. And we also need to delete these two lines or these four lines uh, that takes care of uh, actually implementing that into the update loop. So now we can have this stuff only um, kind of act inside of our pause menu and uh, not have two different things happen when we press escape in dis different places. So basically what we want to do inside of the toggle here is we want to enable some kind of UI or disable it. So we need a reference to that UI. And in order to do that, we'll just create a public game object up here called the UI. And then down here, we'll simply do UI.setActive. And we could either put true here if we want to enable it or uh, false if we want to disable it. And we just want to do the opposite. So we want to flip it. So we can get the current uh, state of the UI by saying UI.active um, self. And this is going to be true if the uh, game object is enabled and not true uh, if it's disabled. So we can just do the inverse of this by putting an exclamation mark here. So in case it's enabled, it's going to flip this to say false, and then we're going to set it active false, which means we're going to disable it. So that's a pretty clever little piece of code, but it's very efficient and uh, totally easy to uh, use. I mean, you save a lot of space by doing it this way, instead of going, if already enabled, do this, if not, do that. And that, I mean, it essentially accomplishes the same thing, and I don't think there's much difference performance-wise, but this is just a lot cleaner. So then we can go and say, um, uh, and now we actually want to have an if statement in here. So we can go if UI.active self now that we've flipped it. So in case we just enabled our pass menu, what we want to do is go uh, and um, freeze time. So um, we of course don't want our game running while the pass menu is enabled. And therefore we can simply go time.timescale and set that equal to zero. And what you might have heard is that whenever, whenever you change the timescale, meaning the 
uh, speed at which the game is running and one is normal time, zero is uh, still not running at all and uh, two is double time, um, you might have heard that you should change time.fixedDeltaTime uh, as well. So time.fixedDeltaTime, here you can see that's both a get and a set variable. And you definitely should in case you're creating some uh, slow motion movement or speeding up the game. But when just setting time.timescale to zero, it's essentially freezing the uh, fixed delta time uh, behind the scene. So it's actually not running the loop at all and therefore you don't need to change fixed delta time. So just in case some of you were wondering, don't you have to do that? You actually do not. And in case um, we haven't just enabled our pause menu, in case we actually just disabled it, we want to return to our normal time scale, which is one. So we want to just have the game back up and running as it would normally. So we should actually already see this happening. And if we go into our uh, UI scene here, or our Unity scene here, and find our game master, we can now reference the UI element, which is going to be a pause menu that we just created. And let's hit play, and let's try and freezing time. And you can see the timer stops, there's no enemy appearing, everything else looks fine, and we can hit escape again, and the game continues. And one nice thing is that you can see our hover animations are actually still working. These are not affected by the freeze time. Um, and this is because this is just a simple recoloring, and the way Unity does it is independent of uh, the current time scale. If you're using some more uh, sophisticated animations using an animator, that will be affected unless you change a parameter on that animator. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. So basically what we need to do now is kind of hook these buttons up to our pause menu in order to actually make them do something. And that's super easy. All we do is go into our pause menu and create some public functions, one for each button. So we'll create a public void here called continue maybe, or we could actually just have it called the toggle function that we already have made public. So we'll do that. And then we only need one for the menu and one for the retry. So let's create a public void retry. And in here, we want to reload the current scene. And so we need to go up here and get unity engine dot scene management. And remember, this is how this is something that we need to access whenever we need to load a new scene or reload an already existing scene. And then we go down here and go scene manager dot get uh, or dot load scene. And the scene that we want to load is the currently active scene. So we just want to reload whatever we are already on. And we do that by going scene manager dot get active scene. And we can't actually just pass in the scene that this uh, returns. We need to go dot and then build index. Cool, so that is the build index of the scene we're currently at, which we are passing into the load scene, and it's just gonna restart. One thing that we also need to make sure is that we unfreeze time, because when reloading a scene, Unity doesn't actually change time dot time uh, scale back to whatever it was in the beginning. So we actually need to manually go in here and say time dot time scale equals one, or we could just hit toggle, which we I think we're going to do. And then we just need another, a third method here for uh, the menu. And we haven't implemented any kind of menu yet. So for now, we'll just throw a debug.log statement saying something like go to menu, much in the same way that we did uh, with our game over screen. Cool. So that's pretty much all of the programming that we needed to do in this lesson. So we can just close down Visual Studio and we can find our uh, pause menu uh, object over here, we can find our continue button and we can add an on click event. So let's just hit the plus sign there, drag in our game master where our script is sitting, find our script and find the correct method, which is our toggle. Now we need to go into our two buttons. First off the retry, add an on click event, drag in the game master, find the script and let's select retry. And the same thing for our menu, add, on click event, drag in script, or <laughs> object find script, and let's select the menu function. So now they are hooked up and we'll call those methods. And now when we hit play, hit escape, continue, go, it goes back as it should. Cool, retry, it's going to restart the level. As you can see, it did that. So if I can uh, let this go up a bit and go over here and hit retry, you can see it totally re uh, restarts the level. And the menu, it should say, go.
go to menu. So that's perfect. So now we have a fully working pause menu. And all I really want to do for the rest of, of the tutorial, uh, since we have a bit of time left, is just add a bit more sophisticated animation. So basically what I want to add is just whenever the pause menu is opened, I want it to kind of fade in. I think it's nice that it just disappears as soon as you want it to. But when it comes to animating UI elements onto the screen, I like to have a tiny bit of animation there. And I'm just going to go with a standard fade, but you can do some fancy UI things. And uh, also, whenever we hover over the buttons, I think this is a really, really boring uh, animation. So instead, let's create something where our, um, where our buttons actually pop out a little bit. So in order to do this, all we really need to do is find our pause menu and we need to add an, uh, some animation to this. And we do that by going to our animation tab or window and hitting create. And this is going to create an animator, an animator and an animation. So the name of our animation here is going to be just pause menu because we only have one animation. So you can see it's created an animator called pause menu and an animation. And really what we want to do is just kind of go forward uh, a, a little bit of time and then we want to animate the opacity of our entire pause menu. So let's just disable the animation window. Let's enable this so we can see what we're doing. Let's hit add component and add a canvas renderer. Oh, I'm sorry, a canvas group. And this allows us of course to animate the alpha channel of this entire object. So now we can go hit record again and we can go uh, forward a few frames and change the alpha to zero. And now of course it animates from totally visible to invisible. So we just need to flip the order of these keyframes. So let's just go like this. And you can see now that we have a nice fading in animation. Actually, I kind of messed that up. So in the beginning here, it should be zero and then it should be one. There we go. So let's see. Yeah, much better. And of course this is currently looping. So let's just find our pause menu animation, not the controller and disable loop time. So now it won't loop. And um, by default, these kind of animators are set to play the animation right off the bat. So as soon as the game object is enabled, this pause menu animation is going to play. So we really don't need to add any more code whatsoever. It's just going to play as soon as we open it up. So let's try that out. And um, okay, so something weird is happening here. And what is that? Well, you can actually see that if we hit escape here, you can see that things are changing and the animator is actually um, updated. It says clip count one here. And if we have a look at the animator, and here you can see that it is animating. It's just stuck at the very beginning. And that's because we froze time, remember? Time is frozen. And so this clip here stops at the very beginning. And when we disable it, of course, it's not going to be playing anymore because the object is gone. So what we need to do is make this animation independent of our current time dot time scale. And we do that by going into the pause menu under the animator and changing the update mo mode. It's currently set to normal, which most of these animators should be, but we want to change it in our case to unscaled time. So when we change the time scale, this is going to just ignore that. So when we now hit play and hit escape, you can see that our pause menu animates on with just a quick fade in, which helps make thing look, things look a lot nicer. And finally, to our buttons, all we really need to do here is maybe just... Uh, enable our pause menu just so we can see what we're working with. Finding our say continue button and you just need to choose one of them to start with and we'll apply the change to all of the others in a very easy way. We need to change the uh, transition here to animation and hit auto generate animation. And this is just going to, uh, well first, create an uh, animation controller and let's just call this one button, really, really general. Um, maybe we should call it something, no, that's fine. Pause menu button. Let's do that. No. Yeah. Let's just do button actually. And let's hit save. So what we can do here is now we have an animator automatically set up with the button controller. And if we look down in our animation window, we have four different animations, the normal, the highlighted, the pressed and the disabled. And we are not really disabling our buttons in any way. So we can just focus on the first three. When it's normal, we want the scale up here to be one, one, one. And so if we just quickly modify something here, it inserts a keyframe automatically and we can just set that back. So now we have a keyframe here 
where the scale is 111. Then we can go to our highlighted mode and we can maybe bump this up to 1.05 on the X and on the Y. So you can see that just makes the button a tiny bit bigger. Bit bigger. <laughs> and let's go under pressed and do the same as uh, with our normal mode. So let's just quickly edit that and have it be at 111. We don't need to do any actual um, uh, keyframing inside of the uh, button states themselves because Unity is actually going to blend between these animation states for us. And so it should already be working. One thing that we could do is maybe when hovering some of these buttons, we could create a tiny bit of um, uh, movement uh, that could be pretty cool. So inside of our highlighted here, uh, we could actually go a bit forward in time and animate it. So we could have it maybe go down to 0 0.02 here and then back up and then right click and select flat so it's the it's kind of pulsating you could totally have that so let's now disable the recording here and this should actually already be uh, working except again this animators update mode needs to be changed to unscale time or else it will not work and then if we disable our pause menu and hit play we should actually see now that Unity does this nice blending and you can see we have our animation in there as well. I actually kind of like that animation. I think it's pretty funky. So let's just keep it in here. So the next thing that we want to do is just apply this to our other buttons as well. And that's super easy. All we need to do is copy the animator, copy that component, find our retry button, change the transition type to animation, and let's now uh, paste the component as new down here. And we do the same thing with our menu. Again, change the animation, right click, paste component as new. So now when we hit play, and this is probably our final playthrough, so let's just maximize the game here so we can get a good view. Hit escape, you can see that we have a nice hover animation for all of our buttons. And it seems super smooth. And we can of course continue the game, we can retry it, or we can go to the menu or at least we will implement that very soon. So that was pretty much all I wanted to show you for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have actually covered a lot of the stuff that I wanted to cover for this course. So if you have any suggestions, I'm very open to hear them. So without further ado, I will see you in the next video and thanks for watching this one. Bye. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October and a special thanks to Sultan El Shadif, Faisal Marifai and James Kelhoun. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash